All right. So as we come out of 2023, which was a market that saw transactions go down by 2030, in some markets, almost 40%. As a result of that, we saw for sale by owners kind of dry up, right? And we were just talking uh, before we hit the recording that depending on what the housing market does will determine if we have more expired opportunities or more for sale by owner opportunities when it comes to our prospecting efforts. So when the housing market struggles, expired listing opportunities increase. When the housing market does well for sale by owner opportunities increase. My belief, gentlemen, is that in 2024, we will see kind of a comeback for, uh, with for sale by owners. And I think it'll be neutral. I think that you'll have both expired listing opportunities like we're seeing right now, but you'll start to see more for sale by owners come back because I think both of you would agree for sale by owners was pretty dry in 2023. And it makes sense because of how much of a struggle the housing market was. Now, as a result of that, that is why I wanted to have this podcast and have this conversation with both of you is I want to, because we haven't talked about for sale by owners in a long time. It was how I kind of cut my teeth in this uh, industry. It's, we were just talking about absentee owners, but for the for sale by owner is still probably, to me, uh, one of the greatest opportunities that a real estate agent has to go out there and serve her market and to get listing opportunities. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So why don't we do this? There's a bunch of tactical things that we're going to get into in today's episode. I want to I want to start off by uh, what what I believe will help the audience the most, and then we'll work through some specific tactical things. And that is this. Unlike, I'm trying to think through all different lead sources. Unlike any other lead source, the mindset I think most real estate agents have, which is probably Dominic, why I think some agents struggle with this lead source, is the likelihood for an agent to get a listing appointment or a listing with a for sale, by, uh, for sale by owner right away is very, very, very unlikely, very unlikely. And any agent that is used to outbound prospecting has a mindset of the exact opposite. There, in that their mindset, and it's not right, or it's not right or wrong, it's kind of what we coach to, is to look for the appointment now. So with a for sale by owner, that opportunity is just smaller than any other lead source. And as a result, it requires a different mindset. Let me explain. Okay. I almost want to draw this out, but I don't have, I'm not going to try to plug in technology and screw up the show that way. But here, here's what I want the, the audience to imagine, whether you're listening or you're watching this show. A for sale by owner hits uh, the market, right? They show up on Zillow and you have every single real estate agent calling this person like they're supposed to do, like an expired listing. And most of them, most of them are trying to convert that person right now. They're approaching it from all different angles. They're saying all kinds of things. They're using all types of different scripts. But nonetheless, they're trying to convince the for sale by owner to do something right now that is different than what they've decided to do. And let me tell you why that's a huge mistake. The for sale by owner on the day they enter the marketplace, their optimism of selling on their own is at, at its highest point. To call somebody during that period of time and try to get them to change their worldview in five minutes is virtually impossible. It's virtually impossible. It would be like calling a Democrat and trying to switch them to a Republican in one phone call. I mean, it's, it's that, that's how, that's the likelihood that we're talking about. We're talking about a worldview. We're not talking about someone getting a Reese's thin versus a, the, the whole Reese's. That's the argument with my girls all the time. It's like, which one's better? We're not talking about that. We're talking about a worldview and the worldview that the for sale owner has the first day they hit the market is I am going to sell this on my own. The, it's the real estate agents that have a mindset or an understanding of all these stats and I can do it better. And that's fine. That's fine. To make that argument to the for sale by owner on day one is like landing on deaf ears. So what ends up happening is these people end up losing the opportunity with these people right from the get go because they end up in conflict with the for sale by owner 
And after that initial conversation, it goes nowhere. Well, here's what ends up happening. So that's all the first day in the first week. Then the second week, you've got maybe half of those agents following up with the for sale by owner because the for sale by owner conversion game is all about the long game, right? And most conversion with for sale by owners happens, be, and I've been tracking this for over a decade, between week six and week eight. That's where all conversion happens. However, we also know that there are very, 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 very few real estate agents that will, that will be in the game six to eight weeks later because they have already ruined the opportunity up until this point. And they can't, they don't have the patience to wait it out, A. And then B, we're going to talk about another thing in just a second, which is to be their agent while they think they don't need one so that when they end up wanting to hire one, you get the business automatically. So this is a game of understanding what I'm trying to explain, which is this is a game of likelihoods. So rather than approaching the for sale by owner like you would an expired listing, like you would an absentee owner, like you would with a circle prospecting call, like you would with any other prospecting conversation, we're actually looking to do something a little bit different. And, and that is to speak in hypotheticals about the future. So let me give a tactical example. One of the things I always have fun with uh, in our coaching calls with our clients is I give this example. It would be, uh, I think this is, the, the audience will get a kick out of this. It would be like going up to somebody on their wedding day, Dominic, right? And after they've both said yes, they're on their way down the aisle, you stop them on the way back after everyone's cheering for them and say, hey, are you guys thinking about getting a divorce? It would be, it would be hysterical, right? Well, you probably get kicked out of the wedding. But, but I think you'd get more, I think you'd get further in that conversation if you were to use a skill that we often talk about with inside the reverse selling methodology, which is to not put people in a corner, but rather speak in hypotheticals. And what I mean by that is this. So if the person's coming down the aisle who just got a uh, who just got married, and you said to one of the the, the 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 spouses to say, listen, if this guy ends up being a bonehead a couple of years from now and does something really dumb, really dumb, you know, um, and I, he probably won't, right? He probably won't. He's a good dude. But if he just does something stupid, you know, would you be totally against finding somebody else that would treat you right? Now, this just a, it's a dumb example. I can already hear people in the comments. Oh, it's a stupid example. I'm just trying to help you understand the difference between what realtors do with for sale by owners so that you can get it. And so going up to a for sale by owner on day one is like them on the altar that they just said yes. And you try to convince them to list their house with you. That's how dumb it is to me versus versus having a mindset of well, what could happen in the future respect what they've decided to do today which is sell on their own today dom respect that nobody else will your competitors will not respect that they're going to try to come at them to try to explain why that is a dumb decision that's what causes the conflict we're going to respect their decision to do this thing on their own and we're going to present a world in the future that may or may not happen and we're going to focus on that so let me pause for a second i want to get your guys' thoughts on this first initial thought ben let me go to you first yeah i, I think to put it in one sentence i would say you want to be the first voice and you want to be the last voice Love so that it. you come into this with the approach of this is going to be a courtship it's not going to be you know uh uh, you know, a quick exchange. I love that. The first voice and the last voice. Dominic, I don't know if we've ever heard of that before, but Dominic, what are your thoughts on this initial point? Yeah. So my my favorite thing, and you actually said it uh, there in your intro, is that if if you are if you are the first voice and you are still there at week six, seven, eight, um, it, when they call you to say, "Hey, I'd like you to come and talk to us about listing the house." It's pretty much yours to lose and a formality at that point because you have already been their agent the whole time. They didn't know they needed an agent. So when it doesn't work out, I mean, the competition's pretty slim. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So let's get a little bit more specific and tactical for the audience uh, for their sake. So what I mean by that is, and, and I think people struggle with this every day, this this misconception around lead generation. 
And, and what I mean by that is, of course, we're looking for appointments. But the vast majority of time, if you look at the ratios, an appointment is not set and people aren't doing the next best thing, which is to generate a lead. You know, we call it proactive lead generation, AKA prospecting. And I think that this all or nothing mindset is really, really holding a lot of agents back from reaching their potential, which is the all or nothing is I'm either gonna get an appointment on this call or I get nothing on this call. Well, there's a huge in between. In fact, I believe your, uh, your potential lives in the middle. Mm. Your potential lives in the middle because if you just look at the likelihoods of things happening to call somebody randomly out of the blue, well, Dominic, it may take you 20, 25 conversations to set a good listing appointment these days, right? Somewhere in that ballpark, would, would that be fair? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well, and this is my argument to all the other agents. Well, what about the other 24 conversations? Well, I didn't get the appointment, right? But time's gonna go by. Like those people probably end up selling a house at some point in the future. And specifically with the for sale by owner, I look at the initial conversation as a, um, as a sorting conversation, a red gumball, blue gumball conversation. And what we're looking to do specifically is we're looking to do a couple things. In the audience, you can write this down as a checklist. We're gonna contact every for sale by owner. You can either do that at the door, you could do that over the phone, you could do that in text, you can do that in email, you can do that in, in direct message. We're looking to see of the for sale by owners that hit the market, A, which ones are open to the idea of a, of a buyer's agent uh, bringing them a buyer for the home. Well, why, Brandon? I thought you talked about, we're not looking to bring a buyer. We're not looking to bring a buyer. We're looking to see which for sale by owners in the market are already 50% uh, there from a belief standpoint of what we can do to serve them. So if you got 10 for sale by owners, eight or nine of them are open to the idea of a real estate professional bringing the buyer to the home. That's a good thing for you. And I'll explain to you more why in a second. Number two, we're looking to see of those for sale by owners, which ones, if they do not end up selling a house on their own, would be open to the idea of hiring a real estate agent to represent them in the sale of their home, AKA listing the property. Cool, that's number two. And then number three, of those for sale by owners, which ones aren't obligated to a real estate agent already? If you follow just that framework, what you're gonna find is, okay, I'm just sorting these through. I'm just sorting through. If you've got 10 for sale by owners in a month, well, maybe you end up with four or five, half of them that fit that criteria, and we're putting that five into your pipeline, and that becomes your for sale by owner uh, conversion pipeline. So it makes it really simple on what is the goal with this first conversation. And then obviously we can talk about motivation and all that stuff. But if you just follow those three things, I think it keeps it really simple. Dominic, your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I mean, listen, you're wrapping this up pretty neatly. That's exactly how it's gone the whole time I've been working with for sale by owners. You're never going to get them all. You're always going to qualify the, a bunch that do fit that criteria. You're not going to get all of those either. Some of them are going to sell on their own. Some of them will find somebody that they're a better a better match for. And then if you keep those people in the pipeline, the people that are coming out the end of the pipeline that are a fit present opportunities, listing opportunities for you. And in the meanwhile, you're meeting new people on the back end of that. And you just keep moving them through the pipeline. And that's how we've always done it for years and years and years. Yeah, that's exactly right. So now let me talk about the next point of, of what I would call FISBO uh, conversion. And, and we won't have time to get through all of them, but I want to talk about this other big idea. Um, this this should, this should help the real estate agents in general in their business, but that is having a uh, a service or a servant mentality. And this is another one where I think real estate agents have a really really tough time with. You know, there, there's all kinds of people coming out now talking about this, but uh, you don't really see it in practice in our business. Like Gary Vee's got a great book, right? Uh, uh, what is it? Jab, 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 right hook. Yep. And, and the whole idea around that is to serve people in a way that when they're ready to transact, that obviously you've earned the business because everybody else has led with their hands out wanting to take something from you. And nothing is more true than converting a for sale by owner. Here's what I mean. I try to come up with these cute little sayings. And this one is to, this one is, 
uh, be their real estate agent while they believe they don't need one so that when the day or if the day comes rather where they look to hire one that you become the obvious choice and so what does that mean that means that if you could just remove the mindset of your selfish interest on what's in it for me how do i get a commission check if you could just remove that for just a couple of weeks i think your entire business will change meaning how do I just help this person? How do I truly, truly help this person sell this property uh, on their own? How do I do that? Well, Brandon, why in the world would I want to do that? Well, I'm just telling you that you know it's uh, the law of reciprocity. You cannot fight it, right? So this is offering them advice. This is offering them signage. This is offering to be a second set of eyes. This is offering to do some open house events on their behalf. Uh, I cannot tell you how many agents try to go after for sale by owners and leave half the opportunity on the table, which is to help them secure a house to purchase. Nobody even talks about this, but so many for sale by owners that end up selling on their own. Well, we, what do we learn? They don't have a real estate agent. And so there's that piece of it, A. But more importantly, we're talking about listings. The ones that don't succeed in selling on their own, you have already secured the business to Dominic's point which means you don't need to even have a compelling presentation to go out there and earn this business. Most for sale by owner conversion happen as a byproduct of a come list me phone call. Dominic and Ben, you guys have been doing this for years and years and years. Ben, can you speak to this idea of serving the consumer um, while they're trying to do this on their own and what that means to you? This is not a tactic, I would say, first and foremost. Um, I think we're we've heard from people that are struggling with it. And even this is where I kind of first started. Well, you have to do this truly believing that you can help them sell on their own. Because if you go into this thing and this is a tactic and you're like, well, well, Brandon, what if they do? And you're trying to hold stuff back, like they can feel that. Um, and, and guess what? If they do sell on their own and you helped them, like you said, you, you can secure the, helping them buy a home because they clearly don't have an agent if they just sold on their own. And then think about all the referrals that you can get when you just, you just blow the top off, you just help somebody and got nothing from it. Um, but ultimately, yes, it does result in a lot of times them not getting to the finish line and you've already won their trust um, because you've given with nothing in return. Yeah, we just had a FISBO mastermind inside of our coaching group. And that is exactly, I almost forgot to say that, Ben, to your point, is one of our agents, I think he closed 51 FISBOs last year. And um, which which tells you that the vast a lot of a lot of what we're talking about ends up turning into business, but even the ones that don't, he got a lot of referrals from for sale by owners because of this act of service. And um yeah, it's just a different way to do business because you, you you know, one of the things that we teach all the time is to help these for sale by owners with marketing. They just don't know what they don't know. And that has, you know, one of, and I'll leave his name out of it, but with the agent I'm talking about, one of the things that he does is he offers to write their Zillow description, right? To help them position the property better. Um, and so these are all things that help to serve the for sale by owner. Dominic, what, what is your thoughts on this point? Yeah, um, I think I would I would summarize this by one of with one of the core principles that you've been teaching all along since you and I have been working together, and that is it, it all comes down to being detached from the outcome. Are you going to go into this and go into it with a service mindset, and you're going to do the things that you do for this person just like you would do for a client of yours, and whatever the outcome is, it it, it I mean it matters, but it doesn't matter, right? It does, it's not going to affect the service that you provide. You know, provide that top level class A service. And if it ends up turning into a transaction for you with this person at this moment, fabulous. If it never turns into anything ever, that's okay too. But the truth is, it's probably going to pay you back somewhere along the line. Yeah. And that's how we have to treat our entire business. I mean, when we talk about, you're talking about client acquisition, lead generation, this is the strategy. Whether you're going to make content, prospect, network, referral partners, you must serve first if you think you're going to get anything in return. You know, I mean, that is just the nature of business. 
And so it's not just a for sale by owner thing, but I want to address something that I just heard somebody in the comments make in the future. I just told the future just now. And that is, well, what would you say then, Brandon, if a for sale by owner says, well, why are you doing all of this for me? Like what's in it for you? And I love this question because it's your opportunity to be honest and tell the truth. And you tell the for sale by owner, well, listen, the reason why I'm doing this is some for sale by owners such as yourself end up selling on their own. And if you do, phenomenal. But if you don't, I would love the opportunity to earn your business one day in the event that you don't. And I'm okay either way. Now, you know, uh, Dr. Cialdini talks about this in his book when he talks about reciprocity. It's about transparent reciprocity. Meaning, meaning if you don't communicate that way, then people start to say, well, what, what, why is this guy doing this? Why is he being so nice to me? But when you communicate it clearly to say, listen, here's my intention. I'm happy to help you out because sometimes, sometimes, Dominic, people that sell their own home in Boise, Idaho, fail to do so sometimes. And I don't know if that'll be the case for you or not. I don't know. But in that event, if I can be somebody who can help you along the way, then perhaps you might be open to the idea of giving me the opportunity to earn your business in the future. Maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't, but that is why I'm more than happy to try and help you through this process and be that second set uh, of eyes for you. And if we never do business together, that's perfectly fine too, because guess what? You may run into people in the future that need a real estate professional, and maybe throughout this, I've earned your trust enough to mention my name. Does that make sense? Right, and then you gain agreement with the prospect, and they say, "That's that's a win-win. That's a win-win. I can't argue with that. I cannot argue with that." Your Ben, your thoughts on that? No, I think that that's exactly how we have to approach it, and we have yeah. to be transparent. Because if you're not, then that does lead to, okay, what what do you have? What's the trick here? What's going on? You you feel something, you got to say it, and that's just kind of laying that out from the start. Yeah, and you can't just be the nice guy or the nice girl because uh, you won't earn business by just being nice. Yeah. I think a lot of people who we've coached over the years is like, dude, I'm doing everything you're saying, right, but have you been intentional around uh, what it is? Have you offered to serve somebody? The only way you okay. could serve somebody in our industry is the listing and selling of a home. Have you offered that up? Just by being nice doesn't do it either. And that's um, the key, like you have to ask yeah. every time. That's how, back to your original analogy, you get stuck in the friend zone. You never do get that opportunity later is because Love you aren't it. clear with your intentions. Yep, spot on. Now, I wanna talk about a couple uh, things that I think other uh, agents also struggle with. They, they say to themselves, well, how is it that you guys always talk about um, that real estate agents can serve for sale by owners from the standpoint of if the for sale by owner can sell on their own and they have to pay us a commission to do so, how does the for sale by owner win here? I wanna talk about this. This is like the big mindset around why agents don't even go after for sale by owners because they don't understand what I'm about to explain. They haven't really understood how it is that we can actually provide value to a for sale by owner. Their mindset, their belief, I'm, we, you, with the three of us have, have, have dealt with this hundreds of times, I've had real estate agents who I've coached say, dude, I don't even believe that I can provide a for sale by owner uh, uh, a value. How can I provide them value, dude? Like they want $300,000 for their home. If I sell their house for $300,000 and I charge X percent, how, I don't understand, Brandon, what am I missing here? Okay, first things first. This is like the first time I thought about this, I'm like, this, this is the end of the conversation. But with inside of this context, if the for sale by owner has not sold the home at whatever price and you have value has been created let me explain if the for sale by owner says well how is it that you're going to be able to help net me more money or how is it that you're why would it make sense for me dominic to hire you when i could just sell this on my own and save ten thousand dollars in commission well in doing so they haven't uh produced the result yet so in other words it would be like well dominic that's exactly what i'm saying if you're able to do so, you are 100% correct that it doesn't make sense for you to hire me. That is exactly what it is that I'm saying. And I don't care what other real estate agents tell you. If you can go out there and sell your house at 300,000 with no real estate agents, you could do the math. 
You're saving money. I'm talking about in a world where you cannot. And therefore, hiring a professional uh, to offer a service to procure their, to, to get you the result that you want, of course, there's an exchange, a, exchange of value. And therefore, compensation, at least a conversation around compensation, uh, a conversation around compensation uh, is, is reasonable. It's reasonable. You see, in other words, let me just make this real simple. If for sell by owner tries to get 300,000, cannot, tries everything they can for two and a half months, just can't do it. They hire you and you sell it at $300,000 or more, you deserve to get paid. You deserve to get paid. That's how you help somebody win. It's not just a simple math problem. The for sale by owner has not got the result. So yeah, it's easy to say, well, if they sell at 300,000 and I sell at 300,000, they're gonna get a lot more on their own, right? But they haven't got the result. They haven't sold at 300,000. So yeah, you can't just uh, fictitiously create these worlds if you get the result that somebody else can't get on their own, of course there's value there and you deserve to get paid. That's my thought on that. Donald, let me go to you first. Well, <clears throat> I'm just thinking back to our first conversation together years and years ago and you, you really emphasized, because this was a mindset problem for me with for sale by owners as well way back when, and you said back then, yes, if they sell on their own, if you said that over and over again, if they sell on their own, sure, of course, they're better off doing it, but they haven't accomplished that yet. And that's what our value is. And that's the mindset piece, right? I mean, there's not really anything else to add to that. Other than that, you have to go into it with that mindset that your value comes around when they can't achieve what it is that they are trying to achieve. And most of the time we know that that, that statistically, they aren't able to do that. I look at this the same way as a coaching relationship with real estate agents. I'll get on this quick and I'll move off of it. Mm. But this is the conversation we have every day with real estate agents. It's And, and we've done it over 6,000 times. A real estate agent that's making $80,000 a year, who's concerned about paying us five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year for coaching. And then when they do end up making $300,000 in income, I say, is it worth it? I mean, you tell me, you tell me, is it worth it? You've been trying this for 14 years on your own. You've been making 60, 80 grand. And then we work together for one year and you end up making 325 and you invest $10,000 a year in coaching. Is it worth it? You got to decide that, right? This is the same thing. Do I deserve to get paid if I help you make four times as much money for you and your family than you could have on your own? Do I deserve to get paid? And I believe that when you have an equal exchange of value, that is the premise of a good business relationship where both parties say, yeah, there's value here. I'm happy to pay the fee. I'm happy to pay the fee. That's what we're talking about in for sale by owner relationship is for the real estate agent to be the coach. Let me coach you up. Let me coach you through this process. And if I can help you get the result that you couldn't get on your own, do I deserve to get paid? And I'll ask a for sale by owner that. You know, and you'll find out, am I dealing with an with a sane, reasonable human? And you could decide yes or no. Okay, so that's the first point. The second point is this. I love asking this question to uh to a for sale by owner, even to myself, even as a real estate agent from mindset perspective. And the first time I, I heard somebody say this as a new real estate agent, it made so much sense. If you think about what the for sale by owner wants to, uh, to occur which is to have a buyer approach them and have no realtor involved whatsoever. Like that's the ideal world that the for sale buyer wants, right? And then you ask this question, based on how buyer agency works today, that could be different here uh, soon, but based on how it's been over the last 50 years or whatever, what, what would be the reason a buyer would forego representation from a real estate agent and shop for sell by owners specifically. What would be the reason a human would do that, Dom? Yeah, uh, because they think they're gonna get a deal. That's it. That's it. It's the same reason why when people shop for a used car, go to people selling on their own versus a dealership. Why? Because you cannot haggle with a dealership the same way you can direct with the owner. This is the same thing. The for sale by owner buyer who says, all right, let me go to these for sale by owners first. I'm a savvy buyer, let me go do this my own, uh, on my own. 
they believe they're going to get a deal. So the, the premise that the for sale by owner seller has that I'm going to save money is oftentimes eaten up by the buyer that they think that they want. Because why would that buyer pay you retail? Why would I pay you retail for sell by owner when every other house is listed by a professional real estate company and I can't get the deal with them? That's why I'm going to you. You have a sign in your front yard that says you're not paying real estate commissions. Why would I pay you your premium price? Which is the result of why we see for sale owners that do end up selling on their own sell for far less than market value. So the money they think they're being saved gets eaten up by the buyer they think they want. And the first time I thought about that, I'm like, wow, the very thing that the for sale owner thinks they want goes against their own interest to get it. Ben, have you ever thought about that? Like, wow, you just got what you wanted and it was worse for you. Yeah, it's 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 because of risk, right? Like there's there that buyer is coming to you and saying, yeah, I'll buy your used car. I'll, I'll work directly to you. But they're enduring some risk to do so versus, hey, why wouldn't I just go to the dealership? Why wouldn't I just go work with an agent and pay more because you're you're lessening that risk essentially I that's don't know. right is that do you yeah, think that's exactly that right way? it's the perception the consumer has when when a house and is listed with it. a yeah when they when it's listed with a real estate professional there's a there's a set of standards that we abide by right there's right. there's procedures there's processes there's disclosures so the the perception that the buyer has is they feel safer versus just buying some house from some random person off of Craigslist, you know, for sale by owner, that yeah. doesn't seem right as as professional and it's because of this. It's because of the law of large numbers. You see, when a property is listed with a real estate professional and it's marketed to all potential buyers, that in it by itself drives the price up of anything. We already know that about marketing 101, and so that's the other thing that the for sale by owner doesn't get to benefit from. Hmm. Don, does that make sense? Yeah, I was I was just smiling because think think to yourself of all the Monday calls you've made to for sale by owners, the hundreds and thousands of calls you you've made over the years, and when you ask them, hey, how how'd it go this weekend? Any any offers come in? And they tell you about the offers they got, and it's always something like, yeah, I got an offer, and like, oh, well, that doesn't sound very promising. What what, what what's going on? Well, they want owner carry, or they want to lease it. Or they want to do some other shady rent rent to own type of situation, and the reason those people approach for sale by owners is because they're bought, th those buyers are not well qualified enough to warrant the services of a professional buyer's agent. Right? They can't qualify with a bank, or they're trying to get some sketchy deal together, and a professional real estate agent just doesn't accept those kinds of buyers, or or they shouldn't. And so. That that's a theme, right? Whenever you call a for sale by owner with that Monday call after the weekend, man, I've just had hundreds of those conversations. It's a great point. And then you can just, you know, ask the for sale by owner a simple question. Listen, let me just ask you this. And and, and I'm good either way, but if if a conversation were to be had where I could show you how in which we can handle the sale of your home, Dominic, and resulted in you getting the money that you wanted or more, would it be worth a 15, 20 minute meeting? And if not, it's perfectly fine. You know, if you could just ask a question like that after the first sub owner, now it'll come full circle, six, seven weeks into the game when they're getting their head kicked in with realtors and amateurs and investors and lowball offers, they're like, man, yeah, let's meet. Let's meet. Let's let's talk about it. You know, and we're giving them a level of certainty that removes the stress and the pain of what we know of one of life's biggest stressors, right? It's 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 like death, divorce, and selling a house. You know what I mean? And so it's like, that's the value in which you can offer to a for sale by owner if you can serve them while they're trying to do this thing on their own, be respectful, be respectful. Get out of your selfish commission breath neediness. If you can put that aside and serve another human being, put their needs before yours, your needs will be taken care of. That is my belief in this business of real estate sales. Any last thoughts you guys have? Yeah, I would just challenge people to be the first voice and then be the first face, right? Just this was one point that I had written down that we didn't touch on, but you've got a 5% chance to set an appointment on that first conversation, but a 70% chance to set an ability to get in front of them and tour the home because they expect that 
to be part of the process of working and gathering buyers and working with a buyer's agent. So just get in front and then serve them along the way and, and put that, that opportunity potential down the road. Yeah, I can't believe we almost forgot that. It's probably the main point. <laughs> so thanks, Ben, for picking us up. It's probably the main point, right, is to go and meet them, right? Because the seller believes that is part of the process anyway, which oftentimes it is, right? Every house that's listed in the MLS offers agent previews. This is just a normal part of selling a property. So it's normal for them to hear from real estate salespeople that want to come and see the house. Like that's normal. So um, any last thoughts that might help the the audience, Dominic, on your side? Yep. Yep. Just keep in mind uh, as a real estate agent, whether you're brand new or been in this forever, for sale by owners are the only lead source that already has their hand high in the air and they are actively in the process of trying to sell their home. They are the hottest, an expired listing. They've been on the market forever, absentee owners. They're in some pro part of the process, right? But a for sale by owner, they are freshly into it with their hand raised as high as any lead source can be. They are the best source of opportunity out there in the market right now today. Great point. It's the only lead source we have like that. It's amazing. So it's up yeah. to you to go out there and serve them. Um, and so listen, appreciate you guys. Great episode today. Hope you guys got a bunch of notes. If you guys have questions for us, throw them in the comment section. We'll see you guys in the next show.